just if I'm feeling really good, like if I'm feeling really happy um, and confident as well, which I think being outside does make me feel like if I'm walking, because I love walking and I love hiking um, and being in like woodlands and on mountains and stuff, it makes me feel so good that I think it gives me like a confidence boost and then I start feeling, then I get more ideas. Welcome to Peak Pyrography, where we discuss artistry and process with creators in the woodburning and pyrography community. I'm your host, Justine Fetty. I was introduced to woodburning in 2020 and haven't looked back since. Today on the podcast, we have Hannah Baker from Knots and Embers. I had such a wonderful time chatting with her. I've been following Hannah for quite a while now and I'm always floored by her work. She's published in the Woodburn Community Book of Templates, Volumes 1, 2, and the recently released Radial Symmetry Edition. We had a couple of internet connection issues, so don't worry when we lose Hannah for just a moment. The gist of what she's saying came through just fine. Hi, Hannah. Welcome on. It's so good to have you. Hi. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me on. Um, So you're coming... You're coming to us from the UK, right? Yes, yeah. I'm um, in the southeast in a county called Buckinghamshire, um, like kind of west of outer London, basically. So okay. a bit more rural. Yeah. That's nice. Out in the country a little bit more, a little away yeah. from the like, busy. Um... Yeah. I'm not a London fan, especially as I've gotten older. I... Uh, I used to like it and now I go in and I'm just like, why are all these people here? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, How's everything going today? Yeah, it's good. Thank you. I've uh, I've done my dog walk, um, which was lovely. It was nice and sunny. Um, So, yeah, it's a nice change to go out and it be sunny rather than we had a lot of rain recently. So, Are those your dogs that you're walking or someone else's? Someone else's, yeah. I hopefully will get a dog soon, but um, no, just walking other people's for the moment. (laughs) (laughs) But that's nice. It gets you outside regularly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's really good, actually, with this um, to go alongside knots and embers. It it means I can stretch, you know, go out and stretch my legs in the middle of the day. So I'm not just sat hunched over some art all day. (laughs) Yeah. Is, Is knots and embers what you do full time? Yeah, um, yeah, it, it is. Yeah, I am. Um, I the part the dog walking is part time, so I just do that for like two hours in the middle of the day, um, and knots and embers is the rest of the time. So yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Because yeah. I I was reading on your history, and I want you to fill us in a little bit more on that. But you were a forest ranger when you started. Um, I was a forest school leader. Um, okay. So I, but I, I did, uh, I, I kind of wanted to be a ranger at one point. Um, I, I did some like work experience with rangers. Um, I just, yeah, I love, I like practical work. I've had some kind of jobs that are inside or, um, you know, where I'm sat at a desk for a while and I, I just don't do well in them. <laughs> I need something where I'm like physically working. Um, so, uh, but yeah, forest school, I loved it's, um, nice getting I, I I wanted to get children out sort of enjoying being in nature so then hopefully when they grow up they care about it and, and um you know want to help protect it um so I did enjoy that for a while uh but it was the kind of forest school that I was doing was kind of toddlers um which was really fun but um god bless you <laughs> yeah <laughs> I have a toddler at home right yeah. now and he's one isn't yeah. a lot <laughs> yeah I mean it was good fun but it was pretty chaotic um and yeah and I did it I did it for a, a couple of years and I just kind of got to the point where um I really wanted to get back into creating um and luckily I I came across a pyrography tool when I was doing the forest school job um and I had no idea what it was it was one of those like a really basic one um okay. And I made a few little signs for my forest school area, like bug hotel and um, just simple stuff like that. And then I started kind of Googling pyrography 
um, art. And I was seeing like these incredible things that people were doing with it. And I just couldn't believe that you could do that with one of those tools. Um, and then obviously the pandemic happened and uh, life changed dramatically for everybody, didn't it? And that kind of just gave me um, some time to start practicing with it. And then I bought my, like my own one and um, I just became hooked on it completely hooked on it straight away uh and then yeah I started sort of making gifts for people and then people were saying you should start selling this um so I did a couple markets over the summer um of 2020 and then uh Christmas Christmas commissions and things like that and then by May 2021 I um I just knew that it was what I wanted to do um so I quit my job uh, which was, when I look back on it now, it seems like completely insane. <laughs> but um, but in that I moment, kind of, it felt right. Well, it did, but also um, I kept saying to people, I felt like I was having an early midlife crisis. Like, it just didn't really feel, I kind of felt like I was out, out of me. Like, it didn't feel like me. Yeah. <laughs> I just was, I was just, I'm just going to do it. Um, luckily, I have a very supportive partner who um, has just been amazing through all of it. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I quit my job and I, it just happened actually that two of the girls that I used to work with at a, a dog, like a kennels, um, they had a dog walking business, but they were going to have to stop it because they were opening a, a doggy daycare. Um, so it kind of was really good timing that I took over their dog walking um and I was able to then leave my job yeah so I feel like it kind of was meant to be um and yeah I mean it's been really hard there's quite a few days where I'm like what the hell have I done (laughs) (laughs) but um but no I'm I'm still really glad that I did it um yeah going well that's fantastic I love love to hear that um you said get back into art so did you do a lot of art growing up as when you were a kid and then you went into more of the like professional scene and yeah um I did uh I I mean I loved art when I was younger I spent all of my time pretty much on art and um really really got into it in GCSE and then in A level um so when I was like 15 16 17 um and my A level particularly I I pretty much failed my other subjects because <laughs> I was just doing art all the time. Um, but I back then I loved um, printmaking. Well, actually, sorry, I loved painting and drawing. Um, and then I started to get into printmaking at the end of my A levels. And then I went and did an art foundation. Um, so just a year. I don't know if you have this in the US. Um, no, I don't think so. It was just a year, and you kind of do like all different types of art, and it helps you pick. Um, a, a, like a, a direction to go in with your art to then go and do a degree um, so during then during that year I got more into printmaking um, so I really loved that um, and then I just kind of I didn't actually know at the end of Art Foundation what I really wanted to do um, so I, I I just basically spent three years working um and then after that I went traveling and so during that time I sort of made gifts for people or you know I did a little bit of art but I just found that I never really had the time um but then once I found pyrography I just made the time so I think it's just that although I loved art nothing kind of like grabbed me as much as pyrography did um I completely understand that (laughs) yeah weird but yeah. yeah There's something soothing and therapeutic and just wonderful about sitting down with your burner and the smell and like it all just adds up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, what, so your, your business name is Knots and Embers. Where did that one come from? Um, so when I started thinking that I was going to make it into a business, um, my partner was like, just start putting stuff up on Instagram and I was like I have to have a name (laughs) I have to to be called something and he was like no you don't just put up so I I literally came up with it in like an evening um and I at that time as well I wanted to also do macrame 
um or macrame however you say it and um <laughs> so I <laughs> still don't know which is the right way um but yeah I started um oh somebody might just knock on my door sorry I, <laughs> I've told them to go around the other way but I don't know if they're actually going to do it no worries sorry <laughs> <laughs> well um, we'll we'll take a quick break here okay. let you go into the door I'll <laughs> be right back <laughs> we're back now you were telling us knots and numbers you came up with it overnight one one yeah. one quick brainstorm session yeah macrame I, yeah I, I wanted um something that was like something and something to um represent the macrame and the wood burning um so and I had embers for ages as well I really liked the word embers um, I just thought it was quite cozy and um, that's kind of how I feel about pyrography as well. It's quite a cozy thing. Um, and then saying embers and knots and I was like, it just doesn't sound right. <laughs> and then eventually we were like, ah, knots and embers. <laughs> and she just there you go. And just sounded so much better. Um, and but now I don't I don't really have the time for macrame. Um, pyrography just takes up all of my time. Um, so that's kind of not really a part of part of my business anymore. Um, but the knot still kind of works anyway because of the wood. So yeah, yeah. I I had no idea that macrame was part of it, but no. I always <laughs> thought it was just the like knots in the wood and burning and yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what kind of, what was, what's your favorite piece that you've burned so far? Um, and maybe really that's hard. like asking you to pick a favorite child. <laughs> yeah. So maybe a couple. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, I mean, there's definitely some that I um, like more than others or some that I, you know, now I look back on them and I think I've improved and I would change. Um, but yeah, I mean, I pr probably uh, the like a, the round stay wild that I did is up there with one of my favorites um and the hair and the moon as well mm -hmm. um I uh I've done a few other animals of the like looking up at the moon now like a couple of dogs and things um and the hair is still my favorite because mostly I think because of the shape of the wood and the bark all around the edge and everything um mm -hmm. And, uh, and then this one, this is actually the one that I have, <laughs> um, but the Luna. Hold up just a little higher. A little there higher. You go. Yes, perfect. Yeah. So that one's one of the recent ones that is um, more That's of so a favorite. Nice. Um, and then the one that, uh, that you got, you did as well is the yeah. Flourish is kind of up there. That's, so that's in the, and yeah. The that was in the community book of templates volume two right two, yeah 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 and that so, was one yeah, of the I first think... ones like I opened up that volume two book and was flipping through it and I was like oh oh this one speaks to me I must I do really this one. I, I think uh, it was the first one I did or if it wasn't the first it's because I knew I needed to like give it time to do it <laughs> and like yeah that she just like needed her time to but so much I love this one <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else has done it. If they have, they haven't um, tagged me or I haven't seen it. So it was really, um, well, it was really exciting to see that you've done it. <laughs> yeah, if anyone else doesn't, make sure you, to tag Hannah at Knots and Embers on Instagram. Yeah, um, so much fun to see those. And then you also had the moonlit mushrooms that was in the first and second community book of templates. And then everybody did it during yeah. the woodburn sessions. Yeah, yeah. I, was, that no, was it wasn't really, Woodburn Sessions. It was the summit last spring. The summit, yeah, which um, was amazing as well because, uh, you know, Rachel messaged me and just asked if um, if I was happy for that. And I was like, yeah, of course. Why, why would I say no? Um, but uh, I didn't get to do any – I didn't get to, like, watch any of the summit just because of the time difference. Um, yeah, so that's hard. So it was just really nice to, like – kind of be included in it a little bit even though I couldn't you know watch any of it <laughs> yeah yeah that was and it was cool to see all the different ways that people took that and ran with it but also knowing that yeah. it like went back to yours and so this is the this is the one we're talking about um, yeah 
I love that as well, actually, because I don't often use color. Um, so it was really cool seeing it in so many different colored versions. And some people did like, you know, realistic colors. They did the mushrooms like red and, and stuff like that. And then other people did like super crazy, um, you know, really bright colors. And it was just, it was really nice to see all the, the difference different yeah, that, you know that people's was interpretations but fun to see that mm. you were saying with with the hair looking up at the moon that that you love that for the shape of the wood where do you get your wood um so when I first started I was going to Waney Edge City Lumber Limited I think um which I still don't know where this is. <laughs> Every time I've gone there, um, Paul, my partner, has driven. And um, I just kind of, I'm just a passenger. I have no idea where we're kind of going. Um, but it's sort of like an hour away from us. And um, he basically, it's all wood that comes from around London, from trees that are um, like unsafe, basically. They're kind of diseased or, and they've had to be felled. Um, so they're really cool because like a lot of it's, super quirky um and like really nice bark and everything um so that was where I went in in the beginning uh and then now I get quite a lot I still go there sometimes but I get quite a lot of it from um Wayne Woodwork um which is uh he sells on Etsy um, okay and I, I don't know where he is either <laughs> but yeah he's got a lot of, a lot of nice wood on there so that's pretty much where I get them. Oh, and then if I want to get um, like small rounds for Christmas ornaments, I get them from um, Wood Tinks, which is also on Etsy. Okay. And those are UK based. So, that... yeah. 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 I've tried um, the Walnut Hollow line, which actually the Flourish was on. Um, and they, I found a UK stockist of them. So occasionally oh, I'll good. get um, Walnut Hollow. The only thing I don't like about the Walnut Hollow is I, I think the wood's really great but I try not to um get anything in plastic um and they they're all sort of sold in the in the um like plastic yeah sort of sheet aren't they um so that's the only reason I otherwise I think I'd buy Walnut Hollow all the time <laughs> yeah um yeah. yeah um so you you're able to source it all locally which is really great yeah keep it all there what kind of projects are you working on right now are you doing a bunch of customs are you doing you know projects for yourself um I wish I was doing projects for myself <laughs> I have a, a few things as well that I've said I'll make for family members and um they're like a year overdue <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah I'm currently working on um I've got this really big woodland piece that I'm doing for someone's house um, and that has, it just grew so much from when I first spoke to him, um, in terms of like the size and also what was going to be in it. Um, but that's five foot by two and a half foot. Um, so it's just ginormous. Uh, and I think as well, I'm still pretty bad at judging how long things take. Um, I've definitely gotten better and I've now started an actual spreadsheet with all of the pieces that I've done and how big they are and how long they take me because I just, I'm so bad at it. I'm so bad at judging it. And I always underestimate and then undercharge. Um, so yeah, this, this big piece, I just massively, massively underestimated it and massively, massively undercharged for it. Um, and then because I underestimated the time so much, I sort of took it on and then said, um, took uh, like, other custom requests for later on in the year um and then it got to the point where the deadlines for those were coming up so I had to pause on the big piece um and that's just happened like multiple times now um but I'm really hoping that I can just get some solid time on it now and, and get it done um so yeah I think it will look incredible when it's done but it's kind of just been um really really horrible <laughs> working on it. some parts that I've really liked and then other parts I'm just like oh god I just I just need this to be out of my life <laughs> lots of little details in there and your your style is pretty realistic on on that one at least yeah I, I guess so I actually asked um my partner this the other day because 
I don't know. I, 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 suppose, I suppose it is. Um, I always feel a bit like uh, embarrassed to say, not embarrassed, but like that it's re- like realism or realistic because I think that implies that I think my work looks like a photograph, <laughs> which I don't think it does. Um, like I definitely see it, you know, could improve. Yeah. Um, and um, I also, like I do quite kind of bold lines around the edges as well because, um, well, I like I like the sort of bold lines, but also... I try to, to um, limit the fading of the piece as much as possible as well. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I get he, my partner was like, "Yeah, it's it's realism," <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, um, yeah, so yeah. It, it is." I think you do. A, I think you tend to do when you've got people in it. It's like a simple line drawing. The people are simpler, and yeah. then if it's like an element of nature, you've got more detail in it and your right. leaves and your uh, the animals and such have a lot more detail yeah yeah no I suppose you're you're right yeah <laughs> <laughs> which which makes it fun because I for me personally like people are really hard <laughs> yeah I, yeah I have done one portrait before um I would like to do more uh but yeah they do frighten me a little bit um <laughs> it quite intimidating um I found that that person that I did really hard um and something again that I struggled with is um I want to make it dark so that it lasts a really long time but that's quite hard to do I think on you know when you're burning something that's light so if you're doing a light-skinned person I find it um hard to kind of get the contrast and make sure that it's like a decent burn but still have them looking like them um yeah so that's something I think that yeah that I find quite like nerve-wracking about human portraits and light animals as well <laughs> <laughs> let me let me burn all of your black and brown dogs I'm happy to do yeah. that <laughs> Just do for them. that can be my niche <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, so when you, you, you're working on this massive mural right now and you've got some other commissions coming up, when you're doing your own stuff, what, what excites you? What inspires you? Where do you draw from? Um, definitely like being outside, I think, um, being anywhere where there's nature. Um, but also I've noticed just if I'm feeling really good, like if I'm feeling really happy, um, and confident as well which I think being outside does make me feel like if I'm walking because, because I love walking and I love hiking um, and being in like woodlands and on mountains and stuff it makes me feel so good that I think it gives me like a confidence boost and then I start feeling then I get more ideas and um, feel like I can like do do more I guess yeah um, Do you take your sketchbook out with you for those walks and just jot mm-hmm. stuff down? No, I don't. I send, um, I take photos or like I'll okay. write on my phone, which is not as nice a way to do it as taking a sketchbook out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I should do that because I really want to get back into like find more time for sketching. I don't because um, when I'm making permission or, you know, something for somebody, I'm trying to get it done in, in a um like a smaller space of time line. yeah so I will if it's like a dog or if it's a um something that has to be quite specific I'll print the picture out and I'll use that to um and some carbon paper to like get onto my wood so that it's quite accurate um whereas if I had more time I would probably try and sketch it but it just takes I loved at school was um you know if we went on trips or something and we would take a sketch pad and you would just draw whatever you saw in front of you and I never I never do that anymore um so yeah I should definitely start <laughs> taking a sketchbook out with me get 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 that all down and then you can get it on the wood and I can't wait yeah. to see those <laughs> yeah when when you're doing your burning and stuff what do you have happening in the background is it 
uh, music? Is it podcasts? Is it the TV on? Is it just you and the burn? Um, no, it's never, it's never just me and the band. Um, I always have something me, on. Me neither. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm a little bit addicted to um, just having something playing all the time, to be honest. Um, I'm really into audiobooks, which pretty much, I think, started when I started doing this. Uh, actually, no, maybe not. Maybe I did listen to some before that. Um, but yeah I love I love reading but again I just feel like I never really have much time for it anymore um but now that I will be you know sat down burning for like two three hours I love having a like a, a book on in the background um so yeah it's usually an audiobook and then if it's not an audiobook it will be a podcast or something um and then sometimes it's, it's music um so yeah there's always something it's never just me yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, do you want to take a little break here? Um, I don't mind. I can do or I'm happy to keep going, whichever you prefer. Let's take a quick break here and then we'll be right back. Okay, cool. And welcome back. Um, so what would you, what do you do these days to promote your stuff? I know you've got the big mural you're working on right now and your commissions are currently closed, but how do you what's your online presence how do you get customers to come in um I mean I don't think I'm very good at this um I yeah I'm not great at um like putting myself out there and um sort of marketing myself I don't think um so so yeah I mean I spend quite a lot of time with my um my sister-in-law uh she's her whole job is is um she like designs well I think she designs websites I'm pretty sure that's what she does um and she does like SEO and everything so I did my website and was really really proud of it last year and then she had a look at it and was like it needs so much work um so we've been going over that together um we went over that for like a few months and um and she worked on all my SEO and actually getting me showing up on Google because I wasn't when I did it um so I think that's helped a lot like I have ha I've had some people get in touch because they found me on Google um but yeah I, I guess mostly Instagram um I have a really bad Pinterest um that's got, like <laughs> three things on it that are just rubbish um so I really need to I need to do that because apparently that's really good um Rachel from Woodburn Corner she she said it a lot that um Pinterest most of her sort of sales comes through through that so um I will work on that at some point but yeah I think it's probably just doing Instagram posts um and Facebook posts and that's pretty much it I think yeah I think but, else. and people find you that way and you've got new yeah. connections and yeah I think so that's, I think that's great yeah I, yeah I could be doing so much more like I I just it's something that I really need to get better at <laughs> well and then you you sell your commissions online but then you also host classes right yeah I've only done one pyrography class and then I did one um yoga and macrame with my sister um so that was something that I did when I uh when I was a forest school leader I, I worked at a country park and I used to do events as well. Um, and so I did like uh, wreath, Christmas wreath making workshops and like wood carving and stuff like that. And I just, I got such a huge buzz from it. Like I really, really enjoyed um, teaching those sorts of things. Um, so that was something that I really wanted to do when I started Knots and Embers. Um, but yeah, I'm, I just find with this business, that I have all these things that I want to do and then before you know it like a whole year's gone by <laughs> and you haven't done any of them <laughs> so yeah I um I'm I need to sort of streamline a lot of things so that I can um start doing more of these these things that I really enjoy doing um but yeah I mean so I've got one coming up in two weeks um which is yeah. a, a wood band a chopping board workshop um so we've got the uh, walnuts and maple, and then my partner is a furniture maker, so he's oh made oh my gosh, tree. you're so lucky! I know, you're so perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, really, really lucky. Um, 
so he yeah made all the chopping boards and then people will come and spend like four hours burning them um oh that sounds amazing I would love to have just four hours to spend burning yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, I'm really excited um and definitely definitely want to put more on um and uh because yeah the one the one that I did before was a Christmas ornaments one um and I did really enjoy that uh, the only thing is, I don't, so we don't have, um, I know over in the US, you've got the Walnut Hollow Versatile, haven't you? Is yes. It um, and we don't really have like a good one like that here, like a, a good budget option. Um, I've tried similar to the Versatile and they just don't, they're really, you just, you need that heat. Um, the and, and the difference is that the, you guys are on like 220 or 240 versus our like 110 so you couldn't just bring the versa tool over yeah yeah I looked at buying some and just getting them shipped over but it, um all the reviews said that they weren't compatible over here um so now yeah. I've actually uh just invested and got razor tip machines um so now from now on my workshops they're going to use uh, a really decent <laughs> yeah a really decent wood burning tool um so I'm really looking forward to this one because I just think that they're going to be able to get so much more done um, in the time that they have. Uh, so yeah, It'll that's good. that's great. Then then you're not fighting with the tools. Yeah, yeah, it'll be yeah. much more uh, enjoyable and relaxing. I think. I hope. <laughs> yeah, it does make it hard to like. You can't send them home with a like. Oftentimes, ones here in the states will send them home with the. Versa tool or something, but right. you're not going to send them home with your razor tip. No, that, that'd be too <laughs> too much too much expense for you to. Yeah, and people yeah. wouldn't do it if they had to buy their own. No, um, yeah, exactly. So then, with the with the classes, you're also doing some markets, right? You take yeah. your art to markets. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, the one that I've done the most is um duck pond market. Which which is, um, I think they have maybe like six or seven different locations. Um, and it's all about uh, locally made um, and sustainable uh, and ethical products. Um, so I go and do the one that's at Ricelip. Um, and it's just really, it's really fun. It's really big. You get so many people coming through. Um, I've done a couple other smaller ones and they just don't go so well, I think, um, because of the price, um, people probably, I, I, you just need a bigger football. Um, I mean, I can make some smaller things and sometimes I do take smaller things. So they're a bit more, um, at the lower end, um, and, and then they do okay. But yeah, I definitely need a market that's got lots more people, um, coming through it um so I've I've kind of learned the hard way that lesson (laughs) yeah Um, but yeah Duck Pond is brilliant it's a really really lovely market to be involved in that's awesome sorry took me a sec (laughs) Um, um so with all of these things that you're doing what do you do to take care of Hannah to practice your self-care or life work balance stuff yeah um again that's just like a um a constant struggle really but um I do again like my partner's really good um so something that I got into a bad habit I got into is uh because the flat that we lived in sorry I'm probably making a noise with this um the flat that we lived in um the kitchen my office, the living room, it was just all one room. Um, and so I would just sit and work and then he'd come home from work and I'd just carry on working and I just couldn't ever really get away from my work. Um, and I didn't have like a, an actual like clock off time. Um, so then he started coming home and being like, right, it's six o'clock, you've got to stop. (laughs) Um, (laughs) and that definitely helped. Um, and then yeah, getting out, uh, for the dog walks, um, that really helps me as well. Um, And I have to have, not have to, but I I have a sort of morning routine that I try and stick to. Um, 
and sometimes it flips I usually start the year off really really well and then as we get like further into Christmas um as I just get busier and it's darker and it's colder I then start to lose it a bit um but yeah I always get up and do yoga either like my own practice or yoga with Adrian or um I'll go to a class or something my sister's a yoga teacher so I might go and do her class and then I'll do um a bit of meditation so whether I just sit there by myself or um I use an app called um insight timer insight timer that's the best it's so good I only and it's free that's like my favorite part of it yeah and there's so much on there like I you will never I think run out of videos on uh audios on there um I discovered that January you can be like I'm looking for a five minute thing that yeah yeah a a stress reducer five minute meditation and you can find that or if you're like I "I need 45 minutes yeah I think that's what's really good about it as well as like if you know you only have two minutes you can find something that's two minutes and then at least you kind of like stuck to your routine a little bit even if you're not dedicating like 15 minutes to it um yeah but yeah I found that like last January beginning of last January so I've been using that sort of consistently for a year now and I just I love it. Well done. Um, and then that's it. That's my morning routine. And then I might, if I have time, when I have breakfast, watch a tiny little bit of Gilmore Girls <laughs> <laughs> for like we, 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you can get a lot of dialogue in in 10 minutes yeah. of Gilmore Girls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, that I think keeps me kind of like feeling good. If I can try and stick to that, in like in the past if I have lost that routine I definitely notice an impact on like my mental health and my productivity um but yeah so basically that routine and walking is what kind of keeps me sane I think and wine <laughs> <laughs> always nice to get a good wine <laughs> yeah yeah um so after 6 p.m when when your partner comes home and says clocked out what what do you do then in the evenings to unwind to relax to um we're we're quite often watch tv we're trying to now though um have like two nights of no tv because (laughs) we've got loads of things we want to do like we've just bought a house so we we need to decorate it um we're also trying to plan a wedding (laughs) so we have like loads of stuff that we need to do um and then also we do we haven't ever since the pandemic really we haven't got back into this as much as I used to be but we both climb um so awesome yeah I used to go like three times a week but um outdoor or in to a gym yeah so we go indoors but we've gone I've gone outdoor on holidays and stuff we go camping and climb a bit outdoors but yeah there's not really anywhere around us to go climbing outside um that was something my husband and I did before the pandemic and then we had our baby my husband and I did climbing too we did it before the pandemic and then had our babies and haven't gotten back out to it yet but we will someday yeah definitely yeah I think um it's just addictive isn't it it's so much fun um and again something that like I think can just make you feel really confident um but then also You're like I mean, yeah I on- sent that yeah <laughs> did <laughs> it on site first gone- time yeah I've also gone there and had times where I'm just like this is just not my day <laughs> I just feel rubbish so- yeah some some days are just high gravity days <laughs> yeah yeah you know really heavy um but yeah we'll I mean we will that's one of my goals for this year is to actually start going like really regularly again um so yeah that's something that we do uh that's about it I think tv (laughs) in the summer we go walking actually because Paul he you know I get to go and do my walk in the middle of the day but he's working all day so sometimes he'll come home and if it's light we'll go for a walk that's awesome Mm. and getting that time with your partner and taking care of both of you yeah 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 so some days are really easy they they feel real good um and some days are really hard you've got those down days yeah. are, what are things you do on the down days to make it through um 
I don't know really sometimes I just like I'm a bit of, in a bit of a bad mood all day and then Paul will come home and make me feel better um something that we actually he does <laughs> is if you put your hands up above your head and just hold them okay. above your head for ages that can make you laugh or um sometimes we'll do you'll know this um you know knocking on heaven's door what Adrian does where you yes. swing from the side that yes. never ever fails to make me feel better I don't know what it is about it but that always makes me feel better um yeah it, you just you stand there with your feet like hip width apart and you swing your arms around and like yeah so that you hit your booty yeah. on one side and then go do it on the other side and you just kind of get silly with it and you move with yeah. it and it feels really good that's really good I don't know why but it really helps um yeah or I sometimes put music on um but quite I to be honest I'm if I'm having like a bad day work-wise I think I'm quite bad at getting myself out of it. Um, but I'm, I, yeah, I'm definitely, I think I've, I've been a bit better recently, like this year so far. I had a coaching call actually with Rachel from Woodburn Corner, um, maybe like two weeks into January. And I was feeling a bit rubbish at that point, um, just because I came into this year and I just feel so behind. Um, I Um, and you know, everybody, I'm, I'm definitely someone that has to step back from Instagram. Um, I, I can really struggle with it and, you know, you go on Instagram and all these people will be like, ah, oh, it's the new year and I'm working on all these cool new things. And I was like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just trying to get this really big piece done, <laughs> which I should have got done ages ago. Um, and, uh, luckily I had a coaching call with Rachel because she always makes me feel better um and she's really good at um I just yeah I struggle a lot with like comparison comparing myself on there um well and it's so and, easy to do you look yeah. at everyone's stuff and you're like oh that's so much better whatever than mine and then you don't see the other people looking at yours and going oh my gosh I can't I wish I'd stuff like Hannah does and yeah yeah it's true it, it's hard to um put that into perspective isn't it um but Rachel said I haven't actually seen it I meant to google it after I spoke to her but um there's like a oh god I'm gonna do a really bad day explaining it but there's like a, a group of images and it's all dots and you basically it talks about how you're focusing in on that one dot of this person's life and you're not focusing on all the other parts that they're that that they're like have going on that day all they're showing on instagram is that one tiny dot um she explained it much better than i just did <laughs> no that that makes sense there's so many facets like yeah. you just don't know about people from the three things they put up on instagram <laughs> yeah definitely and i i do think i've been a bit better with that um since our coaching call uh the other thing that I was really struggling with is I like to give myself time off on the weekends from Instagram. I, I don't post anything really. Um, and I don't tend to like look at it. Um, and I also do that if we go on holiday or like if we, you know, over Christmas and new year. Um, but then you come back and obviously your reach has suffered. Has suffered. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just that, stupid, stupid. Algorithms. Yeah. And that, that really, um, I struggle a lot with that but again after talking to Rachel about it I'm definitely in a much better headspace with that than I was at the beginning of January and I'm now just like not really looking I'm just putting something up and I'm not looking at how it does and if I don't have anything to post like on a specific day I'm just not stressing about it now and I'm just not going to post because I was getting really stressed that I didn't have something to post um so yeah, I I I think I'm hope I hope I'm getting better at um getting myself out of the funk. Um but but yeah, I don't really I don't really know if I'm necessarily great at, at it. <laughs> <laughs> that I I mean I it's great to kind of free yourself from the algor algorithm. I know I had to get off Facebook a couple of years ago cuz it was just too much and I think I've logged on to Facebook Marketplace like 
three times in the last two or three years and I'm just like I'm, I'm fine I'll stick with Instagram and yeah it, I mean yeah it's because it's hard to be a slave to all of the algorithms yeah and I think it can just really spiral um and it can it's just, so easy like, to do that realizing yeah um but yeah I'm I'm sticking it to the algorithm now yeah God. take that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes perfect all right um let's switch gears a little bit here and go into our speed round Okay. And we didn't we didn't cover all of this earlier, and I have it on my notes that I need to do it every time, and I forget to. So, um, but the de- we're gonna get, talk about a deserted island. If you were okay. on a deserted island, um, and I got this from Rachel from Woodburn <laughs> Corner. Um, if if you're on a deserted island and you could only take one type of wood, one burner, one nib, and then one other um, extra item what would you take? So if you can only take one kind of wood. Okay. Um, oh, I don't know. I feel like the obvious answer is lime. So I'm not going to do that one. <laughs> lime? I'm going to go, I might go for cherry. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for cherry. Okay. And then my razor tip. Um, uh, which which version is that? I have got the um, SL one. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's the only one I've I've used of it, and I love it. Like I loved my burner before. I had an Antex Firewriter, and I thought yeah. it was really good. And then I got I only really got the razor tip because the Antex um, doesn't have like a, a nice grip. It was hurting my hand, uh, and I got the razor tip. And I just couldn't believe how much better it was, even though I thought my Antex was amazing. Razor tip just is incredible. Um, So yeah, it would be that. Um, And then I guess my tip would be um, probably a knife tip or like a skew or something. Um, Get those nice fine lines. Yes, I love that. And also Um, shading. Yeah, you can do a bit of shading as well with them, which I I don't really use them for shading, but I have tried it a bit and... um, and it is, yeah, it still works. <laughs> and then if you're going to take one extra item with you to this deserted island? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this would, that would be um, my tortoise, George. <laughs> yes. Can't, you don't want to be alone. I, that's no. fantastic. <laughs> and he's so entertaining. I mean, maybe just to me. Other people might not find him that entertaining. But I, I, he's asleep right now on the floor next to me and I just think he's the cutest thing. <laughs> he's super cute. I saw him a couple times in your stories and he's super cute. He is really cute. He's a menace though. Like he, if your hand is in front of him, he'll just bite your fingers. Um, he like chases me around the house as well. If he, if I get him out, um, especially if I've got bare feet, he'll try and chase me. And I think it's because he wants to bite my feet. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's pretty naughty. Does he remind you of the toddlers you used to teach? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just like them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so now we're going to do our 10 silly questions. So okay. I didn't let you see these beforehand. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, would, do you prefer salty or sweet? Uh, oh, I think that's hard. Probably. I mean, I love both, but I suppose probably salty. Um, I'm just Would thinking you make of, a like, good... popcorn. Yeah, I, I am addicted to popcorn. <laughs> I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, if we can just make it a kettle corn, then I'm, like, sold. Got both of them. <laughs> a kettle corn? I don't it, know what that is. Put, like, um, they put sugar in when they're popping um, it and so it's um, like sugar coated and salty and popcorn and... Uh, yeah that would be good yeah yeah um do you prefer or do you think you would make a good spy no <laughs> not at all um I yeah I'm I, I'm rubbish um I I can't lie um I'm also really clumsy so I feel like I would just alert everyone <laughs> to where I was and yeah I'm yeah I'm really awkward as well I think so I just give it everything away do you prefer driving or flying 
Um, oh, I don't know. I like driving, but I love, I mean, I love going somewhere new. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, I don't know. I'll, we'll go, uh, we'll go flying. Because okay. it feels special. <laughs> um, what's your go-to karaoke song? Oh, um, okay. It's one that like nobody ever knows and nobody, I love karaoke. Nobody ever wants it on when um when I want to put it on <laughs> but me and my sister love it um it's Wyclef Jean or Jean I don't know how you say his name and it's um 911 so okay. yeah I have to go and listen to it to it it's like from <laughs> I don't know it's probably from the 90s or something and um yeah it's just such a good song and you can like really belt it and and with your sister it's yeah. There are songs that are just so special with your sister. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We actually did it at um, New Year's last year. We uh, we put it on really loud and sang it, and uh, her poor children just sat there and watched us. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you doing? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, would you prefer a phone call or a text message? Um, can I say voice note instead? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit addicted to voice notes. I send them a lot. Um, I think my friends probably get quite annoyed with me. <laughs> <laughs> I never text. I think especially because I'm like walking and stuff. So I just, I send a voice It's note. easier to talk and yeah. 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 Um, stay late at work or leave work early. Or start work late or leave work early. Um start what so sorry start work early and leave early is that what you uh start early and leave early no just start at a normal time and leave early or start late and leave on time which would you rather do oh um start early I don't know why this is confusing <laughs> <laughs> yeah the early one okay <laughs> yeah that that was a confusing one um do you prefer coffee or tea um, uh, I drink coffee in the morning and tea in the afternoon. <laughs> oh, there you go. So you get your caffeine from your coffee and like all the good flavors from the tea. Yeah, yeah. I love them both. I don't think I could choose one to pick over. Okay, here's, would you rather work in yoga poses or do work at yoga? work in yoga poses I think so sit here yeah <laughs> yeah I think I'd really enjoy that <laughs> um summer or winter oh god um oh that's really hard because I love I love all seasons autumn's my favorite and then I I really love winter but then once Christmas and New Year is over. I'm pretty much done with winter. Over the cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess maybe summer because of that. Like I'm never really over summer. I just get excited for autumn. But yeah, yeah I do, I do get and... winter by the end of it. Um, and then last one. When was the last time you stayed up past four in the morning? Um oh god, I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe over New Year's, maybe not though. I think it was close to four. I think it was around three. Um, but yeah, I can't, can't remember. <laughs> it used to be a regular occurrence. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then we get older and. <laughs> <laughs> and it ruins you for a week. <laughs> and the early bedtimes feel so much better. Oh, I love, I love an early bedtime. I get really excited <laughs> about it on a work night and I get quite stressed as well if, <laughs> if we're not in bed early on a work night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to have a, a quick little community builder section here. So there are lots of people, lots of accounts on Instagram and other places. And who are three people that we should all be following? Um. So I found this really hard um, because I just think there's so many good 
uh, pages that I follow and and I get like a lot from them as well. Um, but yeah, I went for um, number one, Rachel. I feel like I've mentioned her a lot. <laughs> 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 she's a good one to follow there's a lot of good yeah. stuff that she puts out for Rachel yeah, from the Brain Corner yeah Rachel from the Brain Corner I I remember um when I first started Knocks and Embers and I was so nervous about it I thought you know I'd put some photos up and nobody would like them um and it happened to be during March um and oh. so I saw some of the people that like liked my posts I went and looked at theirs and it they had like the hashtag burnt March um and that's how I then found Rachel and um, I think like I struggle not so much now but I really felt like I struggled making friends on Instagram like I know so many other people that are like yeah I've got so many like business friends on Instagram and um, you know and we talk all the time and we help each other and I just never felt like that I um I felt like quite nervous about messaging people um so I think having burn club um and Rachel doing all these different challenges and stuff really helped me kind of like get integrated into the community um and I just think it's so supportive um and you know from being a part of that I've got my work in two books now soon to be three books yeah the radial symmetry one um so I just think you get loads of like really cool opportunities um if you follow a bun corner and kind of get in, involved in in the community um so yeah that's number one uh number two um again like just so many so many amazing people that i follow I, it's so I, hard i i'm I asking know. you to like pick two and two yeah. more and that's so hard yeah i i yeah there's so many that i like take inspiration from and i learn from as well like i i that's how I kind of started. I just watched loads of, you know, videos and that's how I learned techniques. Um, and someone who, uh, whose work just inspires me so much is Hippie North. Um, I am forever yeah. trying to um, like learn from her and I love the like boldness of her pieces and she has so much like depth in them. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think she's a really cool one to follow. Um, and then the third one, the third one was really, really hard. Um, but there's, I don't know. So it's r.aine, um, at r.aine. So r a n or rain, I'm not sure. Um, but she does like the most incredible, like magical, super bold, um, like nature pieces um and they're just like yeah they're really just really cool really special ones that you um, see and you're like oh my gosh these are just so beautiful so amazing I I want to I want to figure out how I can bring some part of this into mine yeah like just just yeah she does like um cool incense burner things where like the smoke comes out of like really cool places and um oh, I, just love, awesome. I love magical art as well and it they're all kind of like weird creatures and stuff and and again like super super bold um which is the kind of style that I really like um so yeah those are the three that I decided on but it was hard but, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not easy and I mean I couldn't narrow it down to three that's why I started a podcast so that I can <laughs> talk to everybody <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah awesome um so the You've got a couple things coming up right now. You've got your class coming up on the 25th. Um, 18th. 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 Okay. Yeah. So that'll be right after this comes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then you're doing Bucks Art Week this summer. So yeah. if people want to find you, they can go and see you there. Yeah, that's in, um, it's my first time doing it. Um, I tried to do it last year, but I left it a bit too late and I couldn't get a venue. Um, but I found a, a venue in Tame um, called Fitch and Fellows. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to exhibit with them, which is really cool. I've not exhibited my stuff before, so I'm really excited about that. Um, so yeah, that's the 10th to the 25th of June. Uh, and then I've also got... Um, an International Women's Day conference with um, the Chiltern Conservation Board in March. So that's on March the 8th um, and at Missenden Abbey. Fantastic. 
Um, so that would be quite cool. Like there's just going to be people speaking. Um, it's celebrating like women and um, creative businesses. Um, so I'm going to have a stool there um, and sort of be demonstrating and selling stuff. So that will be fun. Um, and then I, I've got a Skillshare class. I'm hoping to do some more of them this year. Um, yeah, and I I'll saw be- your Skillshare class is like, it's like 17 minutes. So it's really accessible and really easy for people to log on and check out and get some intro to wood burning stuff yeah yeah I thought I'd do a um a a real beginners one so it's it starts off with like everything that you'd need to know um and then next I was thinking I might do a um maybe a simple mandala but I'll go through using like a knife tip a spade shear and maybe do some dot work so I'll do a few different techniques um and then hopefully I'll do some more as well but I need to decide what they're going to be um And I'm also going to do, quite a while ago now, actually, I put on my stories about if people would want to um, buy a, like a recorded class and a template of a pine tree. um, And quite a lot. That one that you just gave away. Yeah, well, so I do, I have like maybe two different styles of pine and I used to do a redwood as well. Um, So yeah, yeah, I'll probably do a new template just so it's slightly different to what I sell. Um, And I'll just go through it from start to finish burning it so they can burn along with me and they can purchase that um, as a recording. I don't quite know the logistics of it yet, but that's something I'm going to work on quite soon. Um, And I think that's it. Awesome. Well, people can find you again on Knots and Embers on Instagram and your website is knotsandembers.co.uk. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. I think that's everything. <laughs> awesome. Well, good luck with your big mur- mural. I can't wait to see how that turns out. And oh, me too. It's done soon. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I yeah. Nice to well, know everybody. Thanks so much for coming on. This has been so fun to chat with you. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was really fun. Thanks for tuning in. And a special thank you to Hannah Baker of Knots and Embers for joining me today. I think we could have gone on talking for hours. Next episode, we'll be talking with Crystal from Moss Tangle Arts. It was one of Crystal's online pyrography classes that introduced me to wood burning. So I can't wait to share this one with all of you. Peak Pyrography is produced by Fetty Studios and Justine Fetty. Our producer and sound engineer is Kevin Fetty. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like and subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. You can share your comments on today's podcast or suggestions for the future on Instagram at peak underscore pyro or via email at peakpyrography at gmail.com. That's P-E-A-K. P-Y-R-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y at gmail.com. Until next time, keep creating. I can't wait to see what you make next.